Welcome to Creative Katie's Mixed Media Technique Tag Series. This series is intended to do two things. Help you develop a reference tool that you can go back to that has a whole lot of techniques, tips, and tidbits of information that you can use in your art journaling and mixed media. The other purpose of this is to get you to play, to experiment with your supplies and see what they can do. There are six categories. Ways to create pattern. Ways to use collage on your pages and canvases. How to develop textures, visual and physical. How to play with color. How to finish off those pages. And anything that doesn't fit in any of those categories, well, we have another category. Here are past mixed media technique tag videos. I hope you will go and give them a look. Lots of information there, lots of techniques, and hopefully some inspiration. For your convenience, I've created a playlist, a mixed media technique tag playlist in my YouTube channel. Hit the tab that says playlists and then find the one that says mixed media technique tag. All the videos that I create in this series can be found in that one place. I hope you'll join us. And now, for mixed media technique tag number eight, shading and edging. Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall here, and today we are going to do mixed media technique tag in the category of finishing. One of the things that I've asked recently on my Facebook group, I had a conversation starter, said, my page isn't completed until I, what? And one of the answers that I got was that it's outlined or that the things are shaded. And quite often, even with the tags, it doesn't look finished to me until it is some kind of outline. So I'm going to talk about several ways and mediums and um, supplies that you can use to get that effect. It's because you can get them in more than one way and probably you have the supplies in your stash and you don't need to go out and buy something that you see a lot of the YouTube people using. So of course, since it's a finishing category, I've had to do a little bit of prep work here. And I have prepared three tags and I just put some background color onto those three tags using my dilutions paints and then I just stenciled on with the same paints and each one you'll notice I've used pretty much an Annapolis color scheme and I'm just going to put a link to the that mixed media technique tag video when it talks about picking colors that play well together for a background. Then I also picked some focal points and what I did is I used some of the jelly prints from my latest jelly printing escapades and use digging out my silhouette cameo cut out some feathers using and you know the funny thing is I'm using the jelly prints that I don't like that I was didn't see a use for or I just wanted different color schemes so what I'm going to do is I am going to adhere these down and dry glued down and dried. I'm just adding some lines to make this look more like a feather using my micron pan. This really isn't part of the finishing technique, but it is one of those steps where you're adding a little bit more interest to your focal point. And I want you to take note of these tags and I want you to focus on and maybe come back to this point in the video 
to see what the difference is between now and at the end when the so finishing So one of the things that you done. often see <clears throat> people using are the Stabilo All Pencils. And you can get these in different colors. I think charcoal, black, um, navy, brown, and I have them in several colors, but black is the most common or charcoal. Now, the good thing about this is you can sharpen it to a point, which is nice when you have fine things to go around. So you can sharpen it to a point. Now, this is water soluble, so it will never be permanent. So if you're adding water later to it, if somehow you forget something or you spill something on it, it will reactivate. So that is one of the issues with the Stabilo Oil Pencil. The other thing that I find with the Stabilo Oil Pencil, and it took me a long time to get to like it, it's not very precise. If you like something perfectly outlined, you may be better off using a Sharpie or a Micron pen. You're going to get the line exactly where you want. With this it's not as precise and it's not as intricate. And all you do is go around your item. Now this was glued down with gel medium and I put gel medium on top and that kind of helps it from soaking into the papers, your focal point. Just something I've learned. So once you trace around it, you're going to activate it with water. Or you could just rub and kind of get that smudge look so it's not quite as precise so that's kind of a happy medium. I usually like using a round brush, you can use a water brush and I just dip this in water and in stages, you don't want it too wet, you can just pull the color out. The color will flow wherever the water is so you can just kind of now the nice thing is, if you don't like it because it is water soluble, you can, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, you can always erase it. You can go in, especially if your background, everything is um, permanent. Right here, everything that I've used on the jelly print, on the background is acrylic, so it's all permanent, it's, it's going to stay. Now as you can see, I'm not being overly precise, and I've learned to kind of love that. It took me a while, so I think one of the frustrations that people have with the Stabilo, or Stabilo, however you want to say it, is that it isn't so precise and you can't control <coughs> where it goes. If you are like where it is, give it a quick dry. <coughs> you can always go back and add more. You can always go add, add more water. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see just here, without coming back and touching and doing anything extra, you can see the difference that shading makes. And that's one of the big things that you can do to really make your focal points pop. So I'll, we might come back and do this with a different medium, but for now I'm just going to set that aside and move along. Now, what are the, the downsides of the Stabilo? Not too precise. If that is a problem for you. The other one is it's not permanent and most of the things that you use to outline aren't permanent. If you used a micron pen it would be permanent. If you have a big brush pen they are permanent. 
once they're dry. So that's the advantage of that. But I don't have those and I can't rationalize the expense for me for that. So there is another way that you can get it permanent and I'm going to show you that here. And it's a trick that I learned when I did folk art painting, when I painted on wood. And that was to a, a technique called floating. Now in floating I used acrylic paint and you can use craft paint which is what I folk art painted in. You can also use your Liquitex Basics um, and that's what I have down on my mat here. Okay, so you can use either or. It, it, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to go out so you can see. Way over here I have, I'm just going to turn this a little bit. I have just a little bit of Liquitex Basics. And what I'm going to use is a flat brush. Now, you can use whatever size you like. I find it, because I'm used to this, I use as big a brush as I can handle. Um, you can also use an angle brush and that works. So what you're going to do is load your brush up on one side with, I'm going to do it with a, just a straight flat brush because I have a feeling more people will have this. Um, so you can go up in size to a larger flat brush if, if you want. Play around and, you know, practice. What you're going to do is you get water on your brush and you put, I'm going to zoom in, it's kind of dried here a little bit, and you get it on, I don't know if you can see, not really, just the tip of the brush. And what you're going to do is then work it through the brush a little bit. And I just do that on a craft mat now. And just in and out. You're not going to go back across the paint. You just kind of want just the paint on this side and it's going to get more and more watery. If it's too painty and too chalky, just dip the other side in water. So what you're going to do is put it on the line and you're going to go like that. And you're going to get this kind of gradiated um, look where it's darkest right on the edge of what you put it on. Now this got a little dirty. It might take some, some time. So here's how I would just practice. I would put, you know, curved lines or straight lines, what have you, on your paper and just practice. Load, put a little bit on your brush work it in and take it down there. You can always just dab this up a little bit. Now the thing is once this is wet and it'll stay longer wet if it's on top of a curlic not just raw paper you have to let it dry. So one thing I didn't have when I did folk art was any knowledge about a heat tool, so I it was a waiting game. Now you can just give it a blast of this, let it dry, and then you can go back and get more. You may have to rinse out your brush. So back and forth, and then you can come back and get it darker. Okay, so this same technique you can use with lighter colors, that's typically called a, a highlight, or darker colors. And you're, you can pretty much use any color you want, although typically when I go to shading and, and highlighting, I use white for the highlighting and I use either a dark brown or a black for the shading. So let's do that on this tag. Do not get frustrated. This takes some practice to get it going the way that you like. I'm just pushing it in there. Now it's wet. Now this got a little bit. I'm going to zoom in. There's a 
there's not quite enough there but I'm just gonna give it a blast I can always come back and add so then I'm just going to load my brush back and forth and come back and then I can go on to this side I can go onto the opposite side. So it just takes some practice and timing. And depending on, you know, I wouldn't necessarily start on a project that's Now it's not perfect. Sorry, there we go. Giving it a little dry. When I was, if I was starting it, I would just like cut out a round, a circle, and try to shade around that and practice. So right there, I got a little bit too much paint, not enough water on my brush. And because it's acrylic underneath, you do have a little bit of time to play and you can get erase it if, if you need to. what you can do instead of going on the paper you can go on top of the focal point especially if it's been sealed with gel medium and shade on there and that's a little bit easier so with the Stabilo, you're going on the on the background paper. With this, it's a little easier to go on the focal point. And the thing is, with this, you can also, if I wanted to make the spine of the feather stand out a little bit more, add some detail, I can do that using this process as well and I just outline it. I want a little bit more so I'm going to stop, let it dry. Just as it is. So I'm just kind of doing And if you forget which tip has the, the paint, you can touch it to the craft mat and see, or just rinse off your brush and reload. So, and there you can definitely see the difference between the two. 
This one really stands out against the background, and this one, not so much. I'm just going to do a little bit more floating because this is kind of a new one and you don't see many people online doing this um, in the YouTube videos. If you see anything, it's typically this Debilo All Pencil. Um, the Pip Brush Pens. Here's another way that you could have shaded those th items before you put them on. So here's just another and I'm just going back and forth along the same line. I'm not just kind of working the paint in two and then going along the edge. Add more paint. I'm just going to give that a quick dry. And reload. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. I find this way easier and quicker to do than inking it with an ink pad or a blending tool. And basically you're getting the same, the same effect. water, a little touch in the water dish. So there we have that one compared to him. So you can shade ahead of time using the floating technique as well. Okay, so on this one we've used the Stabilo. We don't have anything here yet. This one we use the acrylic paints using a technique called floating. I, on this one I'm going to use my Ink Tense pencils. Now you can use any watercolor crayon in the same way. The advantage of using this is because you have the whole kit you can do them any color. So I can pick this Shiraz color to highlight or shade this feather because I think it's going to go well with the background. So I'm just going to do this on this one. And I'm just applying this in the same exact way as the Stabilo All Pencil. You have the advantage, you can make it sharp, so you can get into very fine areas. The same thing though, this is water soluble, so 
plus you can erase it if you don't like what you find get what happens and try again negative it is always water soluble so here I've used something other than black just to show you that you can use and sometimes I use I've often used navy um, on my backgrounds as well and here this color really accentuates this and I'm just kind of activating it and kind of get it, tweaking it to move make it move out a little bit away from from the um, from the edge of the the focal point and I'm just you know you add more water the paint the pigment is going to go where the water is and it can go in, to, in and around there many of the finishing techniques that we use are the ones that actually take the longest Now again, once this dries, I can come back and add. I can also add more water at any time to um, lighten it or remove it. And I can also just get it straight on the brush like this and apply and get lots get the water so that it can go on that way. Although I, I do prefer to actually trace my items. So if you have any watercolor pencils, you don't need to rush out and get a Stabilo All Pencil. So that is using the Inktense pencils. The Neo Color 2. Now I love the Neo Color 2s. They are highly pigmented. Again, they're water soluble, so they're just like the Inktense pencils, although they tend, if they're fully activated, they've got more permanency than the Stabilo. Now, I've had to sharpen this. Again, I like putting it right next to my item. I like the Neo Color too because it is so highly pigmented. The black is just really black. You've got lots of pigment going on there. It is extremely, you know, high quality and high pigment. And that way I really enjoy using it. So in much the same way as the Intense Pencils or the Stabilo, I'm just activating it with a little bit of water on a brush. I don't, I don't have a water brush, so not something I use, but you don't need a water brush. You don't need to rush out and buy one if you don't have one. Um, like here, I just dip it in water beside me. No biggie. So with this one, what I'm going to do is just use some charcoal. Now this I just bought at the dollar store and they're soft, medium and hard and I like using either the soft or the medium. And with this one, you're just going around and then just rubbing it. So you're getting that smudged kind of look. It's even less precise than 
I would think the Stabilo kind of gives that grungy kind of look. get that grunged kind of look. Now the last way that I'm going to show would be to just use micron pen and outline it with just this. Some people use Sharpies. I find it too thick, too too much. I, I don't I don't really like it, but um, you definitely can. That's a personal, you know, taste. Sometimes when I'm finishing, I will outline it with my micron pen first, and then I will go and do the charcoal. And I like having the double. With the Micron Pen, the disadvantage is you need it to be absolutely perfectly dry um, and cool. Otherwise, you will kill your pen. And I have done that numerous, numerous times. So I think that might have flavored why I don't use it as much as I, I may you know, see, I see other people doing, I just, I find that it's really difficult. You can use the Posca pan here. Um, mine is kind of, uh, mine is all out of ink and my order did not come. But it gives a finer outline. It does finish it off nicely. It's just a different look. So it's a matter of what you prefer and at different times you may prefer different things. So, so not only can you shade a focal point or words on a page, but you can also use the same techniques and mediums to edge your page. So while this one was the card, the feathers that I use the ink tents block on, and the floating technique, I'm actually using the Stabilo um, to edge with. Now the Stabilo has a fine point, so it's really difficult to, to get a lot of color on it. So I prefer using the Neocolor 2s or the Gelatos or my Inktense blocks for that. But if I do, this is what I have and, and I do grab this to edge a page. I often, instead of using the water brush or brush, I just get my finger wet on a baby wipe and I just wet it that way. And I really like the effect of that. You're not looking for a perfectly straight line around it. So if some places are a little bit more black than others, that's okay. That's the look that you're going for. Now here I'm going to use the floating technique with the acrylic paint because again this is a great application of this and you can use it for all of those things and you can build up more um, layers of color if you want it to be darker plus you could also use different colors any kind of any any color that you have in acrylic paint so here you can see I'm, it's very little paint is going down so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to go over it and I'm going to build up the layers. So I just put the paint on the one side of the brush, walk it back and forth on the craft mat, add more paint, more water as it goes. If it comes off and it's 
very paint and it's not moving very well, you might need more water. If it's running all over the place, you need to tap the side of the brush on a paper towel and get some of the water out. And as you practice, you'll get a, get a handle on that. I really like using the craft paint better than the Liquitex. Both work. But I keep some of this dollar store craft paint on hand just for this. And again, I like the effect of it being a little darker, a little bit more color here and there, thinner other places. So on this last one, I'm just going to use the charcoal to go around the tag, and I'm just smudging with my finger. This is the soft. I tend to prefer the soft or the medium, as I said before, and I like the smudge look. It's not a harsh line, and I like that better than, than otherwise. You can use distress, distress crayons, you can use gelatos. Um, some work better for edging of papers or pages, some work better for detail work. So you can see the tags and the feathers, the shading that we've done using all the various methods has made these feathers pop compare it to the picture at the beginning and in the end I have a picture of it before and after so you can more directly compare but I love how they pop off the page you can see the feathers so we have the stabilo the neo color 2 The acrylic black paint, the ink tense pencil in a color, but you could do black as well, and the charcoal pencil, and the micron pen 08. It's a wider tip. I hope you give this a try, the various ways of getting the different effects. I hope you give floating a try because it's so easy because you don't need any extra products. Enjoy the pictures. Here are the feathers before they were glued down and before any kind of shading or edging was done. And here it is afterwards. And what a difference. These seem to have more life to them. Definitely more interesting, more depth. So I'm hoping by trying out the different techniques and the different mediums that you will develop a repertoire of techniques and mediums that you can use to get the shading or highlighting effect. Thank you for joining me with mixed media technique tag number eight. As always, I love to read your comments, like the video, share the video, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and you won't mix it, miss anything else.